bitches. Happy fucking Friday. Wrong action. I haven't listened to those guys in a while. I was like sifting through it trying to figure out, by the way, if I'm way too loud. <coughs> so I got this hearing thing going on. My left ear has been giving me a hard time all week. And trying to figure it out. I might have to go to the dock or something. Who knows? We'll see. Anyway. <coughs> Valerian in the city of a thousand who gives a fuck. Listen, I don't know. I don't even know what to say about this. God, who cares? The hardest part about reviewing this movie was like, how am I going to make it funny? Because I have to make it funny because I'm certainly not going to sound all that fucking enthused talking about the damn movie. Um, once again, I go fishing for a good freaking science fiction movie and it fails miserably. And, uh, uh, and I can't tell you how disappointed I am in the fact that this movie did not do well. For me, or whatever, it, you know, it didn't seem to do well in the theater. There's like eight of us in there, so you know, definitely not breaking any Thursday night box office numbers. Uh, what do I say about this thing? Well, the beginning was good. All right, I'm talking about the first, let's say, maybe ten minutes or something like that. You know, it starts off with uh, "Ground Control, the Maids." It's a um, fucking uh, song by David Bowie and shit, which was kind of cool. And they kind of went through how they built the city of a thousand planets. And, uh, you know, it started as orbiting Earth and blah, blah, blah. And then more and more people uh, started visiting this space station. And they kept on adding themselves to it and everything like that. Really good, actually. It was actually quite intriguing. It was interesting. And I, I was following along. At that point, I was still in the movie. Okay? And then they went to the alien planet and uh, uh, showed the life of this species that were seemed very, very benevolent and... All of this other thing and lovey dovey, give back to the earth, la la la. And they were, you know, they were, you know, I guess they were, they were, they were pretty neat, you know. And there was an, a little bit of an emotional scene on that planet, and I was really, really optimistic about it, based on the first ten minutes and, and thinking, you know, all right, you know what, this this might actually be a good fucking movie. This might be all right. All right, I'm I'm I'm, I'm getting into this, you know. Hey, right. we might have traction here, yo. <laughs> And uh, then they cut and go to fucking the Dane DeHaan and Kara. I can't remember her fucking last name. Uh, but listen, all throughout this movie, they kept on forcing the romance between the two of these characters, and it just didn't fucking work, okay? There was no chemistry between these characters, and uh, the, I, I don't know, the line either. Listen, I don't know if it's, maybe the delivery of their lines was bad. Maybe the lines were bad. Maybe, I don't know, it gets jumbled up in a fucking mess and who gives a shit, you know? Like, it was all like this kind of a round robin where you can't decide whether or not, all right, now is this shitty dialogue or, or are they shitty? I can't tell. I can't fucking, I can't fucking tell. Listen, Kara's cute as hell, and I think that she actually, to her defense, I'm pretty sure that she might have been able to pull off a chemistry-type love entrance romance type situation if she had somebody better to bounce her uh chemistry off us but there was just nothing to do this guy dang, dang i'm sorry you know what you ruined green goblin for me and now you fucking ruined this you fucking piece of shit so stop fucking you know go back to being in like the handheld fucking you know whatever stupid blair witch style fucking movies that you fucking well, you know what? Just stop making movies altogether. How about that? How about... <clears throat> stop making movies altogether. How about that? <clears throat> yeah, I'm channeling my inner catch-me-outside chick. Uh, so, yeah. There was that. Uh, what else can we say? That was the weakest link. I think the story itself wasn't the weakest link. There was a story there. It was told in pieces, drips and drabs throughout, and they filled it in a little bit too much in between what the story was. And the parts that they filled it in with were kind of shitty. So there's that. And it, and, it, and, it, and it absolutely has everything to fucking do with Dane DeHaan and uh, his counterpart. You know, and Rihanna wasn't in it that much. But I have to admit, I did not hate Rihanna in this movie. She played a, a kind of a, you know, oh God, well, I can't even fucking think of what the hell. Vivian, Vivian's like a fucking toad. Uh, yeah, chameleon. <laughs> 
you know, when she changes into different shit and everything like that, shapeshifter, shapeshifter would probably be the best way to say it. She's kind of a shapeshifter in this film. And that whole scene was done well. Uh, uh, when they were showing what her abilities are and how many different things that she changed into and all that other stuff, I thought that was, uh... Hey! Sorry, wasn't bad. Uh, by the way, I'm not gonna... I'll, I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it this uh, If I accidentally spoil a movie. This movie spoils this fucking movie. Okay, so... You know, don't go see it. Wait for it to be on HBO or something like that. Save your cash. Uh, that was the weakest link. Coming in the close second of, as the weakest link of the movie, we have Clive Owen. He was just such a shitty fucking... He was a shitty menace. He was a shitty villain. He wasn't good. He wasn't a very good villain. I'm sorry. You know what? Clive Owen reminds me of the guy from fucking Die Hard that's like, well, we're going to need some more new FBI guys, I guess. <laughs> the fucking dude on the ground. The clueless fucking uh, commander of the police force or whatever. That's the. That's what he... I mean, that's kind of what it reminded me of. He wasn't really a, a villain. He, he wasn't even all that hateable. He was just there. Fucking Clive Owen. Who made that guy famous? I'm trying to... I was racking my brain earlier today trying to think. You know, he had to be in, like, some kind of blockbuster movie somewhere along the lines that made him famous. And I know there was a specific one. I just can't for the life of me think of what it is. And I'm, I'm going to smack myself. And I didn't want to go on I, uh, IMBD and fucking cheat. But I know it's there's a movie out there that he did. And I just can't think of what it is. It's going to kill me, and then as soon as I fucking find out what it is, I'm going to be like, okay, take away my nerd card. But whatever. The jokes, the jokes, and the jokes, and the same old fucking jokes. They threw a million at them at us, but they just didn't fucking work. There were also humorous situations that had been done like about a million fucking times before, and maybe, you know, no, maybe nothing. But on a whole, i got to say, the, the thing is, is that this was like, if there was a, a tweak here and a tweak there and a little bit of changes here and there and a recasting here and a recasting there, this actually could have been a good film because the backstory was actually pretty fucking decent. Uh, uh, the, the special effects were pretty good all around. Uh, fight chase scenes, spy, space fight chase scenes. Um, when you go see a science fiction movie, then what are you looking for? You're looking for space, you know, you know, you know, you're know, you looking for, you know, fights. You know, space fights. Space fights. I don't know if I'm saying it right. Is there a right word for it? Dog fights in space. All right? <laughs> there weren't that many of them. And, the, uh, the, you know, when you see a movie like this and you're watching people fly through space, it really makes you appreciate things like, uh, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 when um, Rocket and, and um, Star-Lord were on the, those pods flying around. Makes you appreciate scenes like that in Star Wars Episode Seven when, when uh, Ray took the Millennium Falcon and she was being chased by the Tie Fighters. It makes you appreciate scenes like that because it's you know those scenes like you know when I'm watching like scenes like that I'm I'm almost like doing this in my you know like you know in the theater I'm like you know, uh, uh, uh. this one was like you know yeah yeah you know he's yeah he's chasing a guy look at that thank kind of neat I guess. But whatever. Uh, it lacked a wow factor, that's for sure. Um, uh, the, you know, it's a funny thing, too. I saw all these reviews going on being, oh, it's the greatest spectacular thing that you've ever seen in your heart since Avatar. <laughs> since Avatar. You know, they always got to go, since Avatar. Since, uh, <laughs> they always got to say, since Avatar. I'm going to do it again just because I love doing it. Since Avatar. <laughs> Have I successfully beaten that fucking joke into the ground? Let's move on. But, you know, they always seem to say, like, this is that has the best visual effects since Avatar. You, you haven't seen anything like this since Avatar. It was like, I was like, I hate to break it to you, but I didn't really like Avatar that much. So, you know, you know. then granted, I didn't see it in the movie theaters. I wanted to wait and see it in uh, regular D just to make sure that the story wasn't shit. And people were like, well, oh, yeah. But anyway... That brings me to the freaking topic of 3D, though, okay? Stop it with the fucking 3D movies. The one thing that I'm looking forward to about seeing Dunkirk, which I'm going to see, I'm not sure when, maybe sometime this weekend, maybe sometime next week, I'm not sure, um, is that I don't have to put those fucking glasses on. I'm sick and tired of putting those stupid glasses on. And not to mention the fact I'm also sick of paying, like, the extra couple of, couple of dollars just to see a stupid 3D movie. I'm 
tired of 3D. I really am. I wish it would gone away. You know, so remember back, you know, the good old days in the 80s when they had the fucking green and the blue or something like that, and you were watching on TV, and it was just a fad, and it went away? This shit hasn't gone away. Avatar is like fucking what? Fucking eight years old or some shit? It's not going away. It's not going away. So here we are. And Hollywood, of course, is forced to push out these fucking 3D movies so they can get their couple extra pennies, this stupid mother... mother, mother. Anyway, um, that's all i got to say. It's so sorry. I went off on 3D a little bit. I, Fourth love scene, blah, blah, blah. You know what? I've said everything there is to say about it. I don't want to drag this out. Why should I drag it out? You guys have probably gotten to the point by now that you don't want to see the movie and probably turn off the video like three minutes ago, so I can literally say any fucking thing right now. <laughs> anyway, very disappointed with the fucking Inhumans uh, trailer. Uh, Medusa's hair looked like crap when she was grabbing that guy's throat. I'm sorry. It's stupid. doesn't look good enough. When I see it in the comic books, I, I, I just pictured something a little bit more quick. You know, something just quick and dramatic. And you gotta slam up against a wall, too, when you... Whatever. Uh, so, whatever. Very disappointed with the Inhumans, of course, because Inhumans is part of the Cosmic Universe, and the cos Cosmic Universe, it seems, as far as uh, movies are concerned, is all I'm gonna get as far as fucking good science fiction is concerned, because it seems like everybody is just fucking completely aloof when it comes to fucking making a science fiction movie. The last time I went out and saw a science fiction movie was that stupid fucking Jupiter Ascending movie. Y'all warned me about that. I should have listened then. Y'all warned me about this movie, and I should have listened now. Sooner or later, maybe one of these days, I'll learn my fucking lessons about going to these fucking science fiction movies that I want, want, desperately need to be fucking good because I'm such a huge sci-fi nerd. Even the old standards like freaking Ridley Scott are failing me. The hell is the matter with people in sci-fi? Just, you don't even have to come up with an original idea. Just look at the fucking volumes of fucking books that are out there and take one, adapt it, adapt it fucking well. Idiots. Just do something. That's all I got for you, folks. Do something good for yourself. Do something good for somebody else. Love you all. And a happy geeky fucking uh, SDCC weekend.